So, Netvash asked me to look at the Chinese disk detainer, no, not disk detainer, Chinese combination lock, and uh, try and explain to him how it works. So, got the right combination in here at the moment. So, I'm just going to put that down for a sec. And here's the locking bar, okay. So when it's locked, this locking bar is like the shackle, and it's a locking bar at the same time. So there's the shackle part, there's the locking bar, and that's the piece that holds it together. Now the wheels, each wheel has a false gate, alright, or a, yeah, has a, not a false gate, a true gate, and then the rest of it of the inside of the wheel blocks um, these teeth here from being pulled pulled out this way and when the wrong character or number is dialed in each of these is blocked by an inner wheel like that All right. so that's what stops this shackle from coming out each of these gaps here are blocked but when you align the wheels properly uh, on the right number or character basically this these gaps here are no longer blocked by anything so you'd have a space here, the wheel here with the space the wheel here with the space the wheel here with the space and the wheel here with the space and that space is called a gate some locks they have a false gate which is like which kind of half fills the the gaps here okay so you have the the true gate which doesn't fill the gap a, a false gate which semi fills the gap and then the no gate which just completely blocks these here okay so that's that's your locking bar and your I suppose your shackle. Now let's have a look on the inside of this if we can. So down there is our, our keyhole. And can we get a bit of light in there, I wonder? Let's have a look. Try to line this up in a way that we can get the light down there. Hang on, I'm going to get a torch. A torch might be better instead of the stupid light. So let's see now if I shine the torch down the keyhole and we zoom in on the lock please and then now when you look down there you can see the back of the keyhole all right Let's zoom in a bit more or as more, more so I uh, can't speak as much as we can come on you stupid camera focus Okay, well, let's just focus on the front of this for now. Please. So, we have a look here. If I turn a wheel, maybe we'll see it here. You can see that gap there. There's this gap just here. Alright, now when you turn a wheel to the wrong combination, you see that gap closes. And that happens with each of these five wheels on this lock. When the wrong one is is dialed in, that gap, i.e. this one, the true gate gap here that allows the locking bar to slide in and out, it's blocked by one of these wheels inner wall. Okay, so there's no false gates on this, just this true gate gate here. 
Okay, so just this true gate, and you can see down there those inner wheels lined up there. So when the when it's blocked again, like I say, when those wrong combinations are dialed in, those that gap at the top there is blocked and that part that slides across stupid camera this part inside here that when you turn it it blocks the that gap when that's turned to the wrong combination it goes inside of this groove here and that's what stops you from pulling the shackle out okay so hopefully that makes sense. Now if I line that up to the correct combination here, I should be able to push him in. See? See, I have to line those gates up again when I'm putting the lock combination back in there. So when I align this correctly it should allow me to push this bar all the way in but you have to try to make sure you do it and get that bugger in there. Now I think this one here is the wrong one. Okay, so I think it's that one. And then you have to turn him till he's in the right position. And when he is in the right position, it should slide through all those, those gaps. Problem with this thing is its tolerances are so bad that it makes itself awkward to just back. See now all those gates are lined up. This bar can slide in there freely and it can be taken out freely because those teeth are not being blocked. But if I put this in here I'll turn zoom in so we can see a bit better and I turn just that's the right combination and if I move just one wheel which is not always possible on this lock because it's got crappy tolerances. But if I turn one, okay, now that gate at the very front over here is blocked by this wheel because it's on the wrong combination, and now you can see it won't open. Again, if I unblock it, so turn it the other way, it will now let it go. So I hope that makes sense to you. Yeah, but all combination locks with wheels like this work on the same principle. And that is why you're able to decode these because when you're pulling on this shackle, you can see it touches the teeth, and those teeth bind the wheels make them stiff so that you can decode them and then when they're in the right gate then it'll have a little tiny little bit of give and it'll move out a tiny bit and then you'll look for the next one that's touching the tooth on this part here and you'd keep going until eventually uh, you just open it. And fun little fact for you, someone I remember showed me their combination lock like this that uses not like this but that uses these teeth and wheels and they claimed that their bicycle was stolen because these teeth someone had filed these teeth down somehow and then the person had locked their bike up and I don't know maybe just one of the teeth at the end was still there so all the person had to do was to rotate one wheel and then eventually it would open, and you had to decode one. 
So I don't know how they even got their hands on the lock. It sounds a bit fishy to me, but that's just a story I heard. Anyway, see ya.